So we're on our way to the RSA, the Royal Society of Arts, and we're going to meet Daniel McDuff, who's a computer engineer, and Daniel's doing something very interesting. He's teaching computers to better understand human beings by recognising their emotions through his company, Affectiva. So I'm looking at a screen. It's running uh, Affectiva software. Tell me what I'd be seeing and, and how it works, how it registers my emotion. So we detect the number of faces within the image mm -hmm. and then we um, track where they're moving and isolate areas of interest like the eyebrows, the mouth and extract texture from the image and give it to models which have been trained to recognise different facial expressions and actions. Mm -hmm. In the past that's had to have been manually coded so you had to have people look at images of human faces and manually code mm -hmm. the expressions and that's extremely laborious. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing at Affectiva is building algorithms which can do that automatically so in real time, process the images of a human face and code the many different facial expressions that could be occurring, the muscle movements uh, on the face, like raising eyebrows or smiling. Mm. Is it possible that for some people raising eyebrows means one thing and for other people it means something slightly different? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for instance, if you go to a collectivist culture like in Asia, People tend to smile more when they're around people they know, whereas in individualistic cultures, people tend to build relationships with people outside of their current group of friends or family. So obviously this must have a number of applications. We're working with uh, people in gaming companies, people in um, media, understanding how people react to, to different types of content. Mm. In education settings, understanding um, whether someone is confused by a lesson. I'm most excited about the healthcare applications, the uh, fact that we could potentially track uh, things like depression, understanding how people's behaviour and emotional expressions are changing over time. Sure. How's that going to play out over the next few years in terms of how AI is going to start moving? into our vehicle. Yeah, I think there's a lot of capabilities now that weren't there before. Uh, for instance, they can detect if you're starting to get drowsy and maybe behaving irregularly. But a car still can't detect whether you're stressed or whether you're feeling down. Yeah. Uh, imagine if your sat-nav could identify when you're feeling sad and give you a more scenic route to take to work or suggest <laughs> another radio station yeah. to listen to. We are in the car for such long periods, collecting this type of physiological and behavioural data will be very valuable. I mean, we have all of this electronics available to us, why not collect that data and, and help um, people understand more about their lifestyle and how they can uh, you know, stay more healthy. Great, thank you very much. You are very welcome. Very fascinating. Pleasure Talk to meet you. you. Take care. Thanks. See ya. Fascinating to meet Daniel today. So machines understanding our behaviour is something that is going to become more and more prevalent. If I start to nod off in this vehicle, it will tell me. If I drift out of a lane, it will uh, let me know. So that kind of machine-human interaction is going to become something that we're going to be seeing more and more of.